So in this video, we are going to extend our computer-aided design skills from last term. We've already done some basic drawing skills using 2D design. In this lesson, we're going to extend that, and we're also going to bring in some of the stuff that we did last term using isometric drawing. Now we did isometric drawing on paper. Now we're going to have a go at doing isometric drawing using 2D design. So isometric drawing is really good for showing things in 3D. We use it a lot for technical drawings and we use it a lot just for having a bit of fun. And you can see we can create some interesting shapes similar to what we did last term with the castle there. Um, and we also see it a lot in things like Lego and Ikea catalogues. What we also like to use isometric for is for creating what we call exploded drawings. And that's when we take an object and we want to see its different component parts and how they fit together. So Lego is a really good example of that. We want to see the different pieces and how they fit in and slot in with each other. Also a game for things like IKEA furniture, we want to see how the different parts all fit together. For this task we're going to use a few new tools than we've used before. We're going to use some basic stuff like the uh, line and grid lock and trim, uh, but the new tools that we're going to try out today are going to be the parallelogram, the ellipsoid bezier inside a parallelogram, and also the move and copy tool. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to do when you open up 2D Design is you need to set the page up. Now we need to click on the page and that will disappear. We're going to set the page up by going Setup, Drawing, Layout. And we need to change it from A3 to A4. Now remember, when we're watching this video, like we do with all of these videos, take it one step at a time. So don't try and watch the whole thing. Watch what's being done. Pause the video do it and then come back and watch the rest of the video. Now we need to put it onto A4 and we're also going to put it onto portrait and then OK. So there's our A4 portrait page. Then the next thing we're going to do is put the isometric grid on. To so go over to the grid on the right hand side, double click it and that will, under where it says grid angle, we can either have an orthogonal grid or we can have an isometric grid. So we're going to make it isometric. What we also need to do is to change the grid spacing from 10 and change that to 5. So on the X and the Y we're going to change 10 and make it into 5. And when that's all done, we click OK. And now you can see we've got an isometric grid just like you would have on a piece of paper. So what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is to try out a new tool that we've never used before. Now it's in the shapes section, so you need to go to shapes, click and hold and the parallelogram is the fourth one along, one, two, three, four. Now you might need to zoom in. What you will need to do is to use grid lock, similar to what we've done when we've done our drawing. So we're locking it onto the isometric grid. Now we're going to need to zoom in. So let's use the magnifying glasses on the right to zoom in and get a good look at what we're doing. Now what we're going to do, <coughs> we're going to draw a rectangle, a 60 millimeters long and 35 millimeters wide. So we're going to start at the top, click to start, and then as we pull down, we can see down here at the bottom on the coordinates bar how far we're drawing our line. So we want it to be 35. Click there. So that's going to be our width, and then move in the opposite direction, and that's going to be 60. So again, look at the distance. We want that to be 60, making sure that it's going just along the lines of our grid. If it's going wonky, it won't work. So when you get it to 60, click. So we've made our rectangle. Now what we need to do is to make it 3D, because at the moment it's just in 2D. Now we've got two ways of doing it. We could either make another parallelogram by going click, and the depth of it is going to be one square. So we go click, down by one square, and then across. Click. Now that's the quickest way of doing it. The only trouble is with doing that is that you get double double lines appear. So the other way you could do it is by drawing just a line. So a line there and then a line here. So that's now gone from a 2D shape into a 3D shape. What I'd like to do is to take that shape and make a copy of it. So we're going to select it all. So go to the select tool and we're going to use a new tool this is the transform and it's move or copy 
the first one in the transform section. Now we want to repeat it. So we've selected this whole rectangle. And now we're going to make a copy of it. I'm going to make another copy underneath the one that we've got. So we're going to leave a space of by clicking and then draw how much space we want to have in between them. So if we want to have a space of 60, look at the bottom, make sure you've got 60. We could have it even bigger than that, maybe make it up to 100. And then click, and then we've put our extra one in. So it's made a copy, it's made a, a second shape without having to draw the whole thing out all over again. Now for this next one, what we can do is do the same thing again. We're going to copy it, make sure it's on repeat and not replace. We'll draw a line down by 50 this time, so it's sat somewhere in between. And that's going to be the middle piece of the USB stick. Now I just want to make a few changes to this one, because in the USB stick that you made, the middle piece was thicker. So we need to just delete some of these objects. And we'll draw them back in, instead of one square, we'll draw it back in as two squares. Delete that one. Again, I'm using the line tool, but you could use the parallelogram if you wanted to. There we go. So now we've got our exploded three different shapes of bits of acrylic all lined up as if they were exploded. The only thing that's different is that our middle piece had a USB stick in it. So we can draw where that is. The USB stick was actually 15 millimeters wide, so 5, 10, 15, and 35 millimeters long. And you can see that at the bottom. Uh, 35 is there. And again, by keeping it on grid lock, it's going to lock onto all the points on the grid nice and easily. So it needs to be a bit bigger. All right, and then we can go to trim, and we can trim off some of these lines that we don't actually want. So there we go, that's our exploded drawing. Now what we can do is color it in using boundary fill. I'm going to use a solid green for the, the tops. Click just inside the line, no islands. And then we can use a gradient, a graduated fill by going fill, graduated, and OK. Obviously, you can change your colors, have it looking however you want. And then click just inside the line, no islands. And if you want to change that to some different colors, you are. You can do that. And there we go. So there's our three pieces of USB stick ready to go. Now that we've made our USB stick, or the three different parts of our USB stick, we want to put some finishing touches to it. Now we're going to need to print this out in colour. So to do that, we want to make sure that we've got our name on it so we can identify it as ours. We go to ABC for the text tool, click somewhere on the page and put your name, and find yourself a suitable font. And OK. And if you want to make it a bit smaller or reposition it, you can use the yellow box in the middle to reposition it. And use the corner anchors to make it smaller if you want to. Now, what you can also do is a bit of an extension activity because we want to get as much on here as possible for when we come to print it. As some extension and work, what we could do is put a, uh, a round hole in it as if we had a key ring. Now to do that, we need a different type of tool. For this one, we're going to use the ellipsoid bezier. And what we'll do is zoom in a bit so we can see what we're doing. Right, we're going to start from the corner and we're going to click once and move down by one square and then come down again. So we've gone down and right and then back down and left. And that's given me a nice little circle. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Click, down, and down again. Click, down, and down again. And what you could do, if you wanted to, you could fill those in with black. Or maybe you might want to fill them in with whatever you've got for the 
for the sides works quite nicely with a gradient so now we've used the ellipsoid bezier to create some holes in it so that would be like a key ring some other little extension we could do we could add a name in isometric let's put USB because that's what we've created and maybe make that in white now what you can do is move your text sort of close to where it would look on the USB maybe make it a bit smaller and then go to the 3d effects tool now when you click on this we want to make a few changes the finish depth by default is 50 we need to make that zero and if you press retain original in case it doesn't look right we can keep the original and uncheck the right hand view then click OK and then click anywhere on the page and then that'll sort of warp your text and put it into isometric so let's just move that out of the way and put this put this where it should be so you can see there we've got the word USB now it's not actually pointing the right direction we need to twist it a little bit so let's use the rotate tool like that and need to use your judgment on this a little bit but that looks that looks pretty good to me and again you can use your name or you can add any other little features that you want to it so more extension work that you could do as well as showing it uh, exploded is you might want to show what your USB stick looked like when it was actually put together okay and so remember we drew a parallelogram and it was one square thick for the first part and 35 long and 60 uh, sorry 35 width and 60 length I have to move all this over a little bit or you could put it at the bottom of the page somewhere else we also had another one here now what you could do is draw the middle piece which was two like that and then again nice and quick this one click click and click and you can have the same thing if you want to by adding on your boundary fills so you've shown it exploded and assembled and you've got all sorts of other things you can do if you have any time at the end of the lesson you can just go mad and create all sorts of isometric shapes um, similar to how you did in your drawing drawing skills you can go online just look for some isometric uh, objects and have a go at using the isometric grid on 2D design to create some really effective 3D drawings. Good luck and I look forward to seeing your work.